Jigsaw Adventure. This is hands down the most highly requested video I have had for over two years now. And I've tried to film it once already, but it just sounded like a rambling fest. And I really want it to be outlined and organized and hopefully be a critical tool for those of you that are trying to decide which route of accounting you want to take. So hopefully this video does that for you. If it helps only one person out there, then it was worth filming. So also if you're new here, I am a state auditor with the state of Tennessee. I passed my CPA exams almost a year ago. So I'm a CPA, but I'm in the government sector. So I didn't choose public or private out of college, but I did hold a public accounting internship during tax season. So most of my hands-on experience with public accounting was through the lens of an intern and not staff. And that is a big difference. Obviously, I don't know everything going on in the firm or really like the nitty gritty ins and outs of being a staff in public accounting. So if you want to go ahead and click off this video, if you feel like it's going to be a waste, go ahead and give me full permission. But I did want to sit down and film this for all of you that have asked. There have been so many people. Also, I hope you enjoy my bougie fancy water. It's all for aesthetic reasons. The real water I drink behind the camera. Toilet water. All right, let's get started. Obviously, all these opinions are completely my own. No one gave me permission to do this video. No one told me not to do the video. No one is paying me to do this video. These are all my own. Heaven comments and opinions. So we are all entitled to our own opinion and that includes you as well. And also during that internship, it was my last semester of college. I was extremely academically burnt out. I held a 3.8 plus GPA my whole time in college. I always held a steady job. I always took 15 to 18 credit hours, including this semester during the internship. I had 15 credit hours. I stacked all of my classes on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. And then I worked at the firm Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays and Sundays. So I was literally working every waking moment that I was not in class or asleep. But that's what I signed on for and it was very busy and I learned a lot and I'm very thankful for the experience hands down If only I would actually put my hands down and quit talking with them <laughs> You guys probably need to understand my philosophy about work and having a job first I truly believe a job is only to pay your bills Like you should never be at work more than you're with your spouse or your family And there's obviously limited scenarios and busy season is inevitable But as you get promoted as you gain more experience You most likely will be working more hours and then it kind of becomes the norm to be working these extremely busy hours and that's something I highly disagree with personally. I think the quicker that you learn at a young age that the lower you keep your bills and debt the less income you need to make to cover those bills and the less income you need to make to have disposable income and spend money on travel or savings account college fund. That's a whole other life question in general. Do whatever makes you happy regardless. We're all different and I really hope you guys respect during this video that you may disagree with every single thing I say but you're a different person than I am. Also another Another little nugget of a disclaimer here. Right now, I am only supporting myself. I don't have children. I don't have a husband. <laughs> you don't have a husband. <laughs> so I don't feel the pressure of having to provide for a family or a bunch of kids or a spouse. I have more freedom on the money that I make or the way I spend my money. But the flip side of that is I'm paying all of my rent, utilities, and monthly bills by myself. I ain't sporting nothing. Also, the quicker you learn at a younger age that not all promotions are equal, not all promotions are good. You really need to weigh out the additional responsibility you're going to be given, the more time worked you'll have to work, the more accessible and reachable you'll have to be on your evenings or weekends, holidays. And when you take the actual pay raise for your promotion and you take your salary and you divide it about how many hours worked you'll actually be working, are you actually getting a pay raise? That's something to consider for any working adult that is offered a promotion promotion or in the running to get a promotion. It's kind of like, is it worth it? Let me work it. But there's all kinds of different job philosophies out there. Some people just want to make as much money as they can at a young age. Some people just really want that job title that really makes them happy, whether it be manager, senior, partner, supervisor. So they want to work as much as they can to get to that level. That's totally fine. And a lot of people, especially in accounting, firmly believe that your youth right after college is the time to be cranking it hard, working as hard as you can. So you get this really good job on your resume and then you get to relax later in life and really enjoy what you've worked towards. Do it for the resume as you'll hear all the time, especially in public accounting. And I disagree with that a lot because your youth is your youth. That's your prime. That's when you're the most energetic. You're probably the most workhorse. So the firm is able to pay you the least because you're young, but you're working harder than the older people. And that's just how life is. 
is. It's all kind of a corrupt field, but it's hard for me to believe that someone who's like worked to death their whole 20s and they're able to relax in their 30s if they think it's worth it or not, like truly. Time flies, it's valuable, you only live once. But again, everybody's different. I feel like I'm gonna be saying that 15 times in this video. So let's address the giant elephant in the room about public accounting. There are a lot of hours worked. You will be working a lot. And for most people, that's fine. That's what you expect in a job. You should be working a lot. For me, that kind of goes against my whole job philosophy. But at the firm that I interned with, we worked the same hours that the staff worked. I was an exception because I had class, but my other interns interned full time. They weren't in classes at the time. Tax season's from January 15th to April 15th. It would gradually build up as tax day came. So then you're working 10 hours a day. Then it was 12 hours a day. And then the last like month before tax day, especially the week before, it was all hands on deck, seven days a week, no rest, no play. And it, it was brutal. I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't think I'm cut out for that. But the opposite side of the coin is it's only four months of the year. You suck it up, you get to rest for the rest of the year. And a lot of firms will give the employees the option to take Fridays off for the rest of the year, or maybe you have half day Fridays for the rest of the year. But 99% of the time, you will not be compensated for overtime. So even if you're being offered this really high salary, you need to figure out how many hours you're working to divide that salary by to figure out what your hourly rate is to compare job to job. Does that make sense? Also audits busy seasons are usually the same as tax season just because their clients year ends or December 31st. So then they issue their financial statements and then you audit them. And if you have public clients, if you work for a big firm that has public clients who are publicly traded on the stock market, they have a lot of paperwork involved. There's a lot of filing deadlines, quarterly statements. You have to test inventory throughout the year for the client, a lot of internal control procedures. So it definitely varies client to client, but that's why audit busy season is usually also in the spring. It's because of their year end client, December 31st. For our busy season in government, our clients year ends are June 30th. So our busy season is right after that. So the fall, and then we have to have all of our audits done before December 31st because the state issues a giant CAFR. Welcome to the zoom portion of this video. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm editing. So I wanted to elaborate a little bit on how the overtime works with my organization. It is nothing at all like tax season whatsoever. We work a maximum of like 50 hours a week during our busiest time of year, which is in the fall. And I don't think all of last year, I don't think I worked a single 50 hour week, to be honest. But every hour of overtime we do work, it saves up in a cruise and we get to take that leave for the rest of the year in the spring and summer. And that's the secret about why I'm able to go to Africa for five weeks in a couple months that a lot of you guys could not believe that my organization would let me go. I earned that leave so I can take it off. But also for every week throughout the rest of the year, we only work 37 and a half hours a week, whereas most workplaces work 40 hours a week. So even just a normal week is less than normal. <laughs> Work-life balance is key for me if you guys have not figured that out. Okay, get back on the video. So yeah, I don't really believe in working those extreme long busy seasons. I don't think personally it would pay off for me. If it does for you, then great. Another big thing with public accounting is the extreme competitive environment. It really is a dog eat dog world. And I think competition in the workplace is very healthy to an extent. I don't think people should constantly be paranoid that they're gonna lose their job if they don't perform to this high standard. But obviously competition is healthy and necessary as well. You want your employees to have a reason to work hard for it to pay off. And when promotions become available, you're gonna assess which employees working the hardest or more deserving. But too much competition will get in the way of friendships. It becomes kind of a conniving, backstabbing kind of environment. And you don't know if you can trust when someone does something really nice for you because you don't know their motives for doing that. How are they getting their leg up when they're helping you as well? And a big thing with competitive environments is all the brown nosing going on that I absolutely cannot stand. Oh my gosh, I cannot stand suck ups. Biggest pet peeve in a career. And at this firm that I worked at, it was so bad. <laughs> you can't blame anybody when it's just the environment that's set up that way. You can't blame the players, blame the game. Whatever the saying is. Don't hate the players, hate the game. <laughs> that's exactly what this is. Another big thing with public accounting is the unrealistic goals, pressure to perform, and this goes with any workplace. This does not have to be public accounting. I didn't necessarily see this at the firm I was at because I was an intern, so I didn't see the overall everything going on. But I've had friends in college that worked at firms afterwards that got let go because they didn't pass the CPA exam in a year or six months or whatever they agreed to upon employment. I had a friend get let go because he didn't bring in five new clients for his first year there. And then I know a friend of a friend who got let go because even though he met the client threshold to bring in the amount of clients he needed, he didn't meet the revenue threshold. They weren't deep pocket clients. They weren't wealthy enough. 
And it literally makes my blood boil to think about the pressure on these poor employees that just came out of college that you're making them bring in your clients. That is partner work, you guys. When you are a partner of the firm, that is your job, especially if you're an equity partner and you're dividing up the profits for the year. That is not something staff should be having to do. My own personal opinion, obviously. But not every firm is like that. So definitely ask around or hopefully you know somebody at the firm that you can kind of get the nitty gritty about. But know that that could possibly be a thing. There are very shallow parameters. Depending on the intimidating factors of the firm, they probably will not think twice of letting you go if you're brand new. Again, it's a very doggy dog world. <laughs> no feelings, no emotions attached, it's all business. Kind of going off of that last point, networking is huge in public accounting and this is big in a lot of businesses in general again but you are kind of branded for your firm <laughs> and i saw this really bad during my internship but because it was a smaller regional firm they really need to put their name out there to get clients so it's definitely all business and it makes sense i don't blame anybody for it let's say you strike up conversation on vacation about somebody who needs tax advice and they just randomly bring it up you're going to be thinking in the back of your mind well whip out my business card could this be a potential client or let's say you get an email from a potential client at 10 p.m. You're watching a movie. You're going to feel obligated to respond really quickly because that could be a potential client that you need to bring to your firm. Now, a lot of you may be thinking there's nothing wrong with that or that's how life works. And that's fine. Again, that's you. For me, when I'm off work, you guys, I'm as good as dead. I don't have a heartbeat when I'm off work. You do not contact me unless it's highly an emergency. I don't even know how to access my email off of my work computer. I have literally never checked my email off work. My coworkers know to text me if an emergency happens. But again, I'm in government work. It's a little slower paced than public accounting. So I'm on the complete opposite of that spectrum. <laughs> as far as bringing in clients, I am so glad I don't have to do that because I would suck at that for sure. Let me go ahead and tell you. <laughs> if I met some sweet old lady that needed tax help and she was asking what my firm did for services, and if I found out her tax situation seems pretty simple, I'd probably be like, lady, have you heard of TurboTax? It's about 80 bucks max. You can get your refund in a couple weeks. Like I just generally want the best for everybody. And there's not a single answer for anything every single person is different except the lord the lord is the answer to everything jesus christ <laughs> all right i'll get off my pulpit but i have mentioned in prior videos how i really like the networking aspect of public accounting and i do to an extent like at the firm that i interned at they have weekend activities like on saturdays they'll go to the habitat for humanity and help build homes and they're all wearing their firm shirts it's a good image for pr they're helping do charity work and there's charity balls there's christmas parties and all of these network events are pretty cool because you get to meet really interesting people that have a really cool background and you can learn from these people and it's not all for business literally just you may know someone for a personal reason networking can be a really good thing for sure I think I disagree with the point on when it's required versus when it's voluntary I think you lose the benefits when you're being forced to do it so those are the main points that I can gather for the difference between public accounting versus other fields of accounting but there are definitely pros and I probably should have put these at the beginning of the video <laughs> for those of you still listening obviously you will be making good income Income. If you need good income right out of the gate for whatever reason, either you want it or you need it or you're providing for your family, public accounting will be the quickest way to make the most money in the quickest amount of time. And you will most likely be getting continual raises year after year, matching cost of living, but also if your firm is increasing and growing, you're going to get more of a raise as they distribute the wealth. There's also high turnover with public accounting and that's bad on the employer perspective, but for you as a staff employee, that can be good unless you're the one they're letting go <laughs> but there is opportunity for growth for promotions even for lateral changes if you don't like the types of tax returns you're doing or the types of audits you're on you can ask for different engagements you can work for different managers easily you can work under different partners depending on how large the firm is you aren't as limited when you're in public accounting definitely you're you're gonna be exposed to a lot of different things and i think you'll learn what your niche is when you're exposed to the most amount of different accounting problems or areas for example my girl Steffi that worked in public accounting for a long time she really likes internal controls that is her passion now she's an internal audit manager and I feel like my personal passion is fraud and I work in government so if I were to switch jobs I think it would definitely be fraud related but I'm also just a really big fan of working for the government in general because my work helps the general population and citizens of Tennessee it's not for any single company's profit or for anybody to look good, it's literally to help the general population. I think that incentive gives me purpose personally. You'll also get to work with a bunch of different people. So let's say you don't get along well with somebody at your firm and you're on an engagement with them. It's miserable. There's a very high chance your next engagement you won't be with that same person. 
and again depending on the size of the firm but this is very important to consider especially considering industry accounting where you're going to be working within an office of these same people every year after year after year if you don't get along with them very well they're not going anywhere unless they die retire quit get promoted <laughs> so you will be with the same people every day the pro of that would be that you become kind of family oriented with the office people so again there's balance with everything working in public accounting is very good for your resume and there's a lot of people that really push doing it for the resume and i i get that to an extent but i've already covered why i don't fully agree with that but it is important to consider if you suck it up for say two years you will have all kinds of opportunity after you leave public accounting especially if you get your cpa <laughs> also generally speaking this is a very generalization statement but typically public accounting is filled with younger people and i say that as i walk on eggshells there are definitely going to be older people and they're welcome into public accounting just as equally as the young people but because of the high turnover and because of the burnout rate people in their 20s coming out of college super fired up energetic they get in there and it's like two or three years they're completely burnt out they leave then they're refilled back in with college students again now the people who really stick it out through their entire career super proud of them kudos to them they make partner it's all great but just generally speaking a lot of younger people which brings fresh perspective fresh textbook knowledge from college and also a continually evolving culture like just as the times are changing more modern even healthier eating alternatives and being woke that would be definitely more accepted when you're continually bringing in young people whereas when you have people who've worked there forever and you have really low turnover the culture doesn't change as frequently which could also be good but anyways those are the biggest points i think i can make about public accounting and why it is not for me i have a lot of friends in public accounting that absolutely love it they thrive in that environment and again that's great a lot of people out there would completely laugh at me working in government they don't like it at all and you can tease me all day long and that's totally fine that's your opinion i have my opinion and i really hope those of you that are in public accounting whether you love it or hate it i hope you truly understand that everybody is different and I do not mean to offend anybody. You're also entitled to your opinion. I sincerely hope more than most of my other videos that this helps somebody out there as you're trying to make a decision on which route of accounting to take. And right now during COVID-19, it's probably not the best time to put this video out there as employment and question marks are all in the air with the economy. So I apologize for that. And that's all I have for you guys. So I will finally stop talking so you can get on back with your day with whatever you were doing. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye!